This is Daniela Camboni for Kitco News, and joining me today is our good friend Greg Hunter of USA Watchdog. Greg, always good to see you. Good to be here. Greg, I'm so excited to get your opinions on so many different topics today. Let's start with Europe, Greece and Italy. What do you think of the situation? This is the way I see it. Suppose you have a basketball team and everybody's four feet tall and you're playing against people who are six and a half and seven feet tall and you're not winning. Do you replace the coach or do you get taller players? And so where we are with this is that the fundamentals, let's say, of the basketball team, you got four foot players. You're playing against six and a half and seven foot people. You need taller players. Berlusconi on his way out. Uh, you know, Papandreou is uh, basically gone. Uh, but that's not going to fix the pro- There's too much debt. The underlying fundamental is there's too much debt. Now, I don't really care about Greece. We could have taken care of that. That wouldn't be a big deal, which I find frightening in and of itself that just Greece, little bitty Greece, uh, which is the size of what, Rhode Island, I guess, or maybe a little bigger, uh, maybe Delaware and Rhode Island, uh, (laughs) little bitty Greece can sink the entire world economy. Well, if that can happen, then listen, Italy and Spain surely could sink the entire world economy. There's no doubt about that. That's a big statement, Greg. Well, yes, because if they're not bailed out, what is the daisy chain of problems that can happen? And what is the what is the leverage? So who's going to bail out Italy, Greg? Well, this fund was supposed to bail out Italy, the uh, EFSF, the European Financial Stability Facility. But uh, they voted to put one point four trillion in it. But even that's a farce. They've got about three hundred and fifty million U.S., two hundred and fifty billion left. And, uh, you know, according to the rules in the European Union, they they can't print tons of money. They can't even bail out other member states, but they're doing it. They're buying Italian bonds. People like Niall Ferguson, the uh, Harvard history professor, says they're going to print money. And I think they're going to print money. I think either they let everything default in a daisy chain of default or they print tons of money. Meredith Whitney thinks they'll print tons of money, but still let some banks fall, uh, fail. Now, she's the star banking analyst who originally said long before anybody realized Citigroup was in trouble that, ooh, Citi's going to need to cut their dividend. And they, everybody came down on her, right? Well, the long and short of it is she was right. She says there's going to be bank failures. I was on the air filling in uh, as a guest host at a local radio station. We had a Wall Street reporter on who's from over there. And I asked the Wall Street reporter, hey, aren't there going to be big bank failures? Isn't that the thing that you're not telling the public is that there's going to be bank failures because they can't save them all? Oh, I'm telling you, this Wall Street Journal reporter was, uh, 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 well, yeah, uh, well, uh, uh, he was all stumbling all over himself. And that's the problem, which is another problem with the mainstream media trying to get good analysis and actionable information from the mainstream media. It's like they're afraid to cause a panic. So it's their duty not to panic the public. So the fact that Italy is in dangerous bond yield territory, does that translate into good news for gold, Greg? Well, it's good news because ultimately I think they're going to end up printing a lot of money. But listen, gold does well in the, on the extremes. Gold does well in extreme deflation. Gold does well in inflation and hyperinflation. So gold does well in extreme. And here's, here's the thing I want to put out there. Italy is the third largest country uh, who, that has a gold reserve. It's uh, something like 2,400 tons and change. I can't think and I can't believe that Germany that was asked to put up their 34 tons of gold as a reserve for this uh, bailout fund. I can't think that at some point somebody comes around and says, hey, Italy, you want, you want some help? You need to put up your 2,400 tons of gold. And I think that's going to be a big question, right? Because as I wrote in the, my le- most recent piece, or in a recent piece, they're not going to put up Sicily. You know, if, if, listen, this would have never, this bailout would have never happened if the United States had to give up, you know, Alaska and Florida or part of Texas. Or if uh, this bailout would never happen if Greece, hey, you, we'll bail you out, but you need to give up, well, let's see, southern Italy, you know, really nice stuff, and Sicily. And you can have the rest. You can have everything north of Rome. Well, that's a really good point, Greg. We'll have to see if Italy will offload some of its gold. I think they're going to be asked to do so. They're not going to want to do so. They're going to be asked to do so. Greg, want to bring it home now? Let's talk about MF Global going down. How worrisome is that to you, Greg? This is my worry about MF Global. Who was regulating a primary dealer of U.S. Treasuries? There were 22. MF Global has been suspended from that function. There are now 21. 
who is regulating them, how could they allow a primary dealer of treasuries, I'm talking about the Federal Reserve, which is the premier regulator here in the U.S. of uh, MF Global because they're a New York-based company, how in the world did the, is, was the Fed regulating them? And who are the other primary dealers that are in deep doo-doo? Now, we know that Bank of America is trying to offload $75 trillion in OTC derivatives that I'm sure are perfectly hedged and bilaterally netted. Same with J.P. Morgan Chase has $79 trillion in these derivatives. Now, well, you know, the, the people on Wall Street would say, well, the notional value is very small. We have insurance credit to fault swaps, which is insurance. It's an embarrassment of a market. And, you know, we have bilaterally netting. And we saw how well that worked with, well, let's say MF Global, uh, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, AIG. Need I go on? They were all bilaterally netted, too. So the question is now with MF Global going down, not whether or not you know, you know, a few thousand uh, uh, of their customers are going to get their money back and how their funds were commingled. Yes, that's bad. But the real question is, well, if this happened to MF Global with John Corzine, a former governor and uh, a Goldman Sachs chief at the head, what's going on at the other primary dealers, not just here, but abroad in Europe? And will the Fed be forced to act again? You know, they pumped out $16.1 trillion dollars According to a government accountability report uh, uh, in the aftermath of the last crisis, what's the Fed going to do? Talk about bullish for gold. That would be bullish for gold. Greg, let's talk about the Republicans right now. So much drama. I would like to get your opinion on the Kane ordeal. Well, the Kane ordeal is, I think, a smokescreen for the more important issue. Is he the guy that can lead the country? Is his 999 plan uh, a real plan? And I say no. And here's why. None of the Republicans, or for that matter, the Democrats, are talking about we have a banking system here in America and uh, over in Europe as well where they have to allow them to do phony accounting, government accounting, uh, government-sanctioned accounting fraud, that they can value their assets, uh, you know, uh, uh, mortgage-backed securities and actual real estate on their books at whatever they think they can get for them in the future. That's not how the IRS does it. Uh, they have marked market accounting. So who would you like to see win the Republican race, Greg? I, you know, I hate to lean on, lean on uh, the, the one with the, 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 that's talking about the real issues, and it's, the, it's, it's how much we're overextended overseas. I mean, we need big cuts. We need to be out of Europe, out of Korea, out of Japan. I mean, we need big, big cuts. The only person talking about that is Ron Paul. But everybody, wants to, every, every, but everybody wants to maintain the status quo, and it is just not maintainable. In this whole super committee, uh, which I have real constitutional questions over, that's not the way that the budget was supposed to be done by 12 people in a room. Uh-uh. That's supposed to be done by Congress. However, listen, I think they're so divisive and so far apart. The Republicans want to get the freeloaders and, and uh, cut the programs, and the uh, uh, Democrats want to tax the rich and increase spending. And there's no middle ground between any of these parties. And I think we're going to end up with a stalemate, which is going to basic, basically trip, uh, what, $1.2 trillion in mandatory cuts, including military spending. So uh, I think that's basically what's going to happen. It's going to be uh, ugly instead of, you know, pointed and uh, in a bipartisan effort. I just don't think they're going to get anything done. Overall, Greg, from what I can sense, you're still bullish on the yellow metal. I Listen, these little, you know, there's been price declines in the past week or so, what, three, four hundred points, and gold has gone down 30 or 40 bucks. I think every time it goes down, it finds a bid, and people are going to go up. I think you have higher lows and higher highs, and with what's going on in the world, do you see any uh, a, a plan in sight that's going to actually uh, put a, a stop to the uh, sovereign debt crisis and the out-of-control spending in the U.S.? And I say no, and I think ultimately they're going to print money. Uh, especially when they're faced with a complete default and meltdown, or they're going to print some money and pick some winners. I, they're going to print money. Greg, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Always so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for watching. You can email me, as always, at newsfeedback at kitco.com. For Kitco News, I'm Daniela Cambone.